Hi there, welcome to the fourth episode of Programming Kata with Closure. I started learning Closure recently and in this series I document my journey. In the previous episodes I was solving code katas on the codewars.com website. Today, however, we will try a new platform for practicing programming skills, Exorcism. Exorcism is free to use and it offers you 50 different language tracks. Each track has dedicated mentors, so you can get some feedback on your solutions. You can find Exorcism on exorcism.io. Let's jump to my dashboard. Here I joined Closure track. I haven't done any exercise yet. And let's see what does it look like. We will start with Hello World because there is some CLI that we need to install. So let's click here. I use Fedora Linux, so I will go here. Uh, we can use Snap Exorcism. Client. Now we can configure the CLI. Okay, so here's my token this but let me just configure it here okay okay we are set let's download the hello world What we have, we have laning and project here, so we can run lane test test. Okay, the test fails, so we need to fix it. the function that returns the string hello world so there are no arguments needed we can just return this now we can run tests again okay zero failures so we can submit of course, we can just get rid of this thing here before we submit. And now we can just exercise and submit this thing. Okay, let's see what we have here. Okay. We can request mentor feedback. We can see that exorcism is different compared to Code Wars, uh, especially with this command line tool, but I think it's pretty interesting. Before I started recording this video, I made a quick research to find an exercise that will be challenging and that will allow us to introduce some new closure functions and concepts. And I found this one quite challenging. It's called Allergies and let's dive into its introduction. Given a person's allergy score, determine whether or not they are allergic to given item and their full list of allergies. An allergy test produces a single numeric score which contains information about all the allergies the person has. The list of items and their value that were tested are, here we have allergies. So if Tom is allergic to peanuts and chocolate, he gets a score of 34. Now, given just that score of 34, your program should be able to say whether Tom is allergic to any of those allergens listed above, all the allergens Tom is allergic to. Note, a given score may include allergens not listed above, uh, for instance, allergens that score 256 and above. Your program should ignore those components of the score. For example, if the allergy score is 257, your program should only report the eggs allergy. Let's download the exercise and we will see what kind of tests we will find there. So 
So here we have those two functions that we need to implement, allergies and allergic to function. Let's take a look at provided tests. Mm, so we can see allergies function executed with different scores. We can see the returns a vector of keywords. And of course, is allergic to returns a Boolean value, okay? Uh, let's uh, start implementing our function and we will start with defining a map of allergens, okay? So let's define a map. Map enclosure is defined with those curly brackets. And in our case, we will use integers as keys in that map and we will associate those integers with uh, keywords, ex expected keywords. Hope I didn't make, make any typo. So we have our map of allergens, and now we need to start implementing allergies function that accepts a single parameter score. Now, because every allergen is associated with the next power of two, we can see that we could use binary strings to determine which allergens are associated with our score. Let me show you it by example. And here we can run some experiments. In Java, we have this method called to binary string. So if we execute this method with, let's say 34, we will get binary representation of that number. And uh, for those of you who uh, are not familiar with binary numbers, let me explain uh, how to read this number. So starting from the right side, this binary number, it translates to the following formula. So we take the zero from the right side and we multiply to the power of zero plus, here we have one, so we take one and we multiply it with two power of one and then we take another digit, which is zero here, zero, and we multiply it by two power of two. We continue it, two power of three. So you can see that the every digit, uh, when we move to the left side, the power increments. So we have the next zero multiplied two power of four. Then we have one, so we have one, that multiplies to power of five. And of course, multiplication by zero produces zero. So we can simplify this formula to one, multiply two power of one plus one multiplied to power of five. And of course, we can continue simplifying this formula to two power of one plus two power of five. It of course, simplifies to two plus 32, and it of course produces 34 as a result. Let's start with the following. We will call integer two binary string on our score. Let's use allergies. So we can call our function. 34 and we get binary representation. What we can do next is we need to reverse this string. So we will call reverse function. Can reload here. So we have the same string, but in the reversed order. Why we reversed it? Because we want to associate with each uh, digit, we want to associate the uh, power index, right? Here we will use uh, power zero, power one, power two, power three, power four, power five, and so forth, right? And of course, the reverse function here returned a list of characters. So we will need to use in Java, 
we have this character get numeric value. So if I use with character free, I will get free as an integer. Okay. Character get numeric value. And if I try it like that, let me show you what happens. It says uh, no matching method get numeric, va numeric value found. And this happens because this is a Java method. It's not a function. So we need to apply it as the anonymous function. Uh, we will use this shorthand syntax for anonymous function. Now we can uh, reload and we can see that now we have a lazy sequence of um, integers, zeros and ones. The next step is to limit our sequence to only eight allergens, right? So we will use take function, we will take eight elements from that sequence. And if we reload, we actually don't see any difference. But if we do 257, you can see that uh, it only takes eight elements. In the next step, we will use map indexed function, uh, the function that we have learned about in the previous episodes. And we will use this function to um, calculate our formula. Okay, here is our anonymous function that accepts two arguments. And we will use math power to calculate the power of two using its index here, the, the first argument of that function, this is the index, and we will multiply it by the second um, argument of this function, which is zero or one, right? So here, we should end up with something like this. So our formula was executed, we have two, we have 32. Of course, you can see that these are like a floating numbers. So we should be able to fix this with the int function here. Okay. And now we have uh, the formula executed. The next step is to call filter function that will filter out the not positive value. So we will call and it filters out all zeros from our sequence. And now in the last step, map allergens. Because what happens next is the following. Uh, if we call allergens map, if we call, let's say, allergens with this map, we want to get the value associated with key two, we just call this, right? If key does not exist, it will return nil. If we want to get the allergen associated with number 16, we just call allergens 16. If we reload, we should be able to get peanuts and chocolate. Okay, so I think the allergies function is ready. We can try lane test. Of course, it fails because we need also allergic to. Let's get back to REPL and let's think about how we can implement allergic to. So if we look at the test, allergic to accepts the score and the keyword, right? So we need to score allergen. This is, is the following. We will have to call allergies function with given score to get the list or sequence of allergies. 
and then we can try using sum function returns the first logical true value of predicate right so if we have something like sum mm, with the function let's say I want to check if the argument let's say is equal x and then I can have a vector of let's say empty vector it returns nothing right if I have uh, eggs here it will return true and if I have something else it will return nil so then we can combine it with we can actually negate nil function you can see to get the right test okay uh, let's give it a try so what we are going to do here is the following so we will call sum with the following anonymous function if it's equal to allergen and then we will call this Let's reload. Uh, pa, 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 starting in line 21. Of course. And now. Thirty four. Chocolate is true. Let's run tests and let's see if the solution is ready to go. Yeah, all tests passed. But before we submit, uh, let's try to do some refactoring to our function. If you watched previous episodes, you remember that at Code Wars we've seen some solutions that were using this threading macro, right? Okay, let me show you one of them. So here was the mumbling exercise we solved. And we've seen that some of these solutions used threading macro. We could use it in our example as well. So let's take a look how we could use this threading macro in our example. Let's comment this function for a second. And let's use threading macro with score here. What we can do is we need to read actually our the previous implementation from the end. So we need to call integer to binary string here. Then the result of integer to binary string with the score will be passed to reverse function. Okay. Then we will call map. And then we will call take eight. And then we call, let me just copy paste this. And then we call filter boss. And we end up with mop allergens. Okay. Let's see if it works. As you can see, it works. It's probably we could also make some small improvements like we could remove this, probably this from this macro. So if I remember correctly, yeah, it works. Awesome. It sounds like we have a solution to this problem. So we can submit. It should be okay. Now we can complete the solution. We can look at the community solutions, however. Maybe here. Ooh, this one is concise. 
Congratulations, sir. Looks amazing. I will need to analyze your solution. It looks really impressing. Maybe let's look at, I don't know, here. Mm -hmm, this is minor string reverse. Okay, here we have some map function, so not an allergy keyword introduced. Yeah. Using set. Also cool. And that's it. This video was much longer than I expected, but I hope you have learned something useful today. Go to exorcism.io or check the link in the description if you want to train your programming skills on that platform. Don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't already, and write a comment to help me rank this video higher. Thank you so much for watching, I will see you next time.